It's funny, my guy JB, uh, he had sent me a tweet of uh, Ian Rappaport talking about with the emergence of newly signed wide receiver T.Y. Hilton, the Cowboys are releasing James Washington. He's healthy and has played in two games this year for Dallas. He heads to waivers and could be claimed. And he said, such a Ravens move. And I looked up James Washington's age. He's 26. And I replied to him, but he's young. So this is not a Ravens move at all. He, he ain't even hit 30 yet, so Ravens ain't even looking his way. But anyway, YouTube team, keep, keep it clean. What's going on? The St. Graven here with another video. Um, there's been a lot of discourse, uh, of course, with Lamar Jackson over the past, of what, two months? However long it's been. It feel like it's been two months, but I mean, really the whole season with the whole contract thing, but especially... Since he's been out, like every week that he's out for longer, the discourse, it, it builds up even more. But recently, um, of course, there was the whole the back and forth with the Mike Preston articles. And, and then it's, it's recently changed because Rich Eisen, Rich Eisen on his show, he talked about how he talked to the Ravens. in I think he said week 15, I believe. Um, and he said that people in the Ravens, they really thought like the coaching staff and stuff, they really thought that. Lamar was going to be back uh, for the following game in week 16, um, but he didn't come back, and uh, I know he talked about how Lamar wouldn't want to play like with the brace on, um, and that he would want to be 100% before he even steps on the football field, um, and it, it got me thinking, because I know there have been a lot of people who feel like Lamar, like he played his last down for the Baltimore Ravens this year. And I ain't been on that at all. I, I, I'm somebody who just never thought that. Um, and it's still a, a big part of me that doesn't think that he's played his last down uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. But um, I'm starting to really understand and see people's point of view on exactly why they think that. Um, my point of view, like, like I've expressed here a lot of times, I just feel like for Lamar, um, him like being who he is, uh, we'll we'll, we'll want to go out there and compete and, and try to make something happen in the playoffs. And I know he would be up against a lot. And sad enough as it sounds, it's the truth. Uh, one of his biggest things that he would be up against would be his own coaching staff, his own coaching staff, his own personnel, his, his own their scheme. He he would be up against the Ravens for a lot of stuff. Then that's before they even step foot on the field against whoever they end up playing in the playoffs. So he'll be up against a lot. Like even with with Tyler Huntley, I know a lot of people are like, oh Tyler Huntley this, Tyler Huntley that. He's up against a lot. Ravens offensive players, they are up against a lot. Bef before the, the, uh, the opposing team even has to scheme for them Before they even step foot on the field Just because of the way that the Ravens operate and have operated on offense It's just, it's rough It's very rough um, I, I, We've said it on here before We were just on my guy uh, Kevin Ostriker on his channel Locked on Ravens And he asked, dude, we talked about the Ravens being contenders or pretenders or, And if they are contenders, what do they have to do? And I said, well, they... Things will have to be perfect because there's literally no room for error with them on offense. The way that they play offense, the way that they call offense, there's no room for error at all. So in order for them to get to where they want to go, the offense has to be better than perfect. And, and they are up against themselves so much. Um, but with Lamar, um, I've, I've continued to think that he's definitely, oh, yeah, he'll definitely come back and play this year because, hey, they're in the playoffs. They're in the, it's different from last year because last year they didn't have a playoff spot locked up. This year they do. Um, so he would definitely come back. But I know a lot of people have been just giving a lot of pushback on that, saying that they don't think he's going to come back. And what they say when they say that is about the business. Why will Lamar come back? Well, one, um, because – He's not uh, paid yet, and we know that the uh, we know that he he went into this season as a risk. He went into the season betting on himself. He went into the season without a contract, so that right there it was already a, a risk of betting on himself. Whatever I mean, every every time a football player steps on a field, it's a risk. But Lamar could be in a position where it's like, hold up, and somebody put it. I forgot who it was. But I'm, well, it's been several people I've been seeing a lot. But somebody put it really nice. Um, it talked about how if Lamar goes out there, 
uh, and he plays, he gets hurt. The Ravens gonna be like, oh, this no, this is damaged goods. We don't, we don't want this, and that could mess things up for him for the long term future. If he went out there and played and got hurt, or if he went out there and wasn't all the way ready, wasn't all the way healthy yet, that's been something that a lot of people have been bringing up too. Like, why should Lamar come back? Why should he go out there and play and play through injury for a team uh, that he hasn't gotten his bread from yet? And, of course, he's played through some injuries already. But now, like, in the thick of things, the offseason literally right around the corner, your big payday literally right around the corner. And that's whether it whether the Ravens end up paying him, if they franchise tag him. That could, again, I still think if it's franchise tag pops out i think stuff will definitely get ugly if that franchise tag is applied um but hey we'll see we won't know till we know um but why should lamar jackson risk himself if he ain't got his bread yet why should he go out there and play through injury and another another thing that's um that i've seen people talking about too is the actual playoffs um so, man, somebody put it so good. They're like, man, the the fans, and not to say that players don't care about it, but somebody said the fans, they care about winning more than the players do. And initially I was looking at it and I said, hmm. But then I really thought about it and I was like, huh. Because as fans, we can selfishly, we can selfishly view these players like, oh, man, hey, I really want them to come back. I want them to play. Hey, they, they need to get back out there on the field because I want to see my team win. I want to see my team go as far as they could possibly go in the playoffs. I want to see my team be as successful as they possibly can be. And, and of course, as a fan, that's how we look at things. That's how we view things because we're fans. We're fans. We sit at the end of the bar and we watch these games and whatnot and we root for our teams and we want our teams to have the ultimate uh, level of success. That's what we want it Sounded like 50 Cent At the beginning of this album But anyway um, We want our teams To have the most As much success As they can possibly get uh, But the players This is their business These are their careers This is their money So It's different for them And not saying that They don't want to win Because of course They want to win I'm sure they want to win But like Fans Like players with losses Players will get over a loss Like that the losses don't linger nearly as much as it does with the fans. Fans, when our favorite team loses, it's like, oh, man, we talk about it. We upset about it. Well, some people upset about it for days and stuff and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> we talk about what went wrong, what went here, whatever. But players are like, okay, we lost. Move on. Move on. And I think that's because they have so much stuff that goes into a football week that they got to focus on. They they just got to move on. Because if you let that loss just linger, now if it's a playoff loss, that's different. But if you let that loss just linger, then that's going to mess you up for the next week. It can mess with your mentals for the following week. Um, so you got to get over it. But the point is that viewing football and the business side of football from a fan, from a fan's point of view, is much different from a player's point of view. And both sides are in it for themselves. Both sides are in it for themselves. The fans are in it for themselves. The fans think like, hey, again, I want my team to go far. I want my team to do well. I want my favorite players to be out there. And that's not even that it's nothing wrong with it. It's just what it is. And the players, the players, they have to look out for themselves. Hey, this is my money. I'm trying to get paid. I ain't trying to have no long-term injury. Hey, I got, I got to take care of me. And there's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is why a lot of people have continued to feel like Lamar Jackson won't play. So and, and I, can, I can see uh, their point of view uh, a lot clearer now. Now, do I still think he'll play? I do. Now, if he does play, I think he will definitely be 100 percent ready, like 100 percent ready and more than 100 percent. Um, no brace, no setbacks, no limitations, anything like that. Um, cause yeah, he he shouldn't go out there with anything less. He shouldn't go out there feeling anything less than a hundred percent. 
Cause yeah, this and another thing too. Like uh, I know um, everybody always points out, um, like with Lamar specifically. I think my guy Hendo brought this up. How uh, or maybe it was, maybe it was Jose brought. Maybe it was Jose. I think it was one of them two. But anyway, um, so many people point out how wins on a QB stat. They say wins on a QB stat, wins or a team stat. This and, and however you feel about that is cool. I disagree. Because why I, I think it's actually both. It's both a team stat and a QB stat. Because if you look at the wins with Lamar and then you look at the Ravens wins without Lamar, you can't tell me that it ain't no QB stat too. You can't. Like you really can't. But anyway, um they brought up how um uh, people say wins are a team stat with Lamar, but then when it comes to playoff losses, they'll point at the one and three. They'll point at that quick, fast, and in a hurry. It's like, hmm, that's that's very interesting. And that's true. Um, so if he comes back to this team, like, and I know we all want the Ravens to win the Super Bowl. We really do. I know that well, there's some people that actually don't, but most of us as Ravens fans, we want the Ravens to win the Super Bowl. But when we look at this team, we look at the personnel, we look at the scheme, we look at how coaching operates, we look at how some stuff is executed. Um, I think most people don't realistically think that this is a Super Bowl team. And I know so many fans, I've seen so many fans bring up, hey, in 2012, we didn't think the Ravens were a Super Bowl team. We didn't think they were going to make it because they had lost a bunch of the games at the end of the season and whatnot. Um, like, we didn't think we, they were going to make it then. And look what happened. And while that is true, it is true. And anything can happen in the playoffs, you never know. And that's what, of course, we're hoping for. But realistically, when you look at this team, you don't think Super Bowl team. You don't. Um, I know so many people think that the Ravens will be one and done. I think they'll at least win one playoff game. At least one. Um, but a lot of people think they'll be one and done. Um, so if you realistically like look at this team, um, especially as, as a fan, as the quarterback, and you think about, huh, if I go out there and we lose, that's going to be put on me in contract negotiation. But at the same time, you could be like, hey, if, if I go out there and I do great and we win, that's going to be put on me in contract negotiation. So it, it's, it's a very, very tricky spot for him to be in, for his camp to be in, for his people to be in. Um that's why I, I, I can see, I could definitely see both sides uh, of this whole saga, or whatever it is. But I guess later on today, uh, we'll start hearing more about it because today uh, should be the first uh, day of Ravens practice um, this week. And that will tell us, start telling us the story about this week. Um, if Lamar Jackson is going to be practicing this week. Um, so yeah, should be interesting. Anyway, team keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all, and just like a lot of people think Lamar Jackson is gonna continue to be for the rest of the season, but we'll see. I'm out.